What's up, guys? We're here at AMC Town Square with Chasing Cinema. Mr. James Shoot. Dot com. And we're here for Dwayne Johnson in Skyscraper. Yes. Uh, a big movie. A lot of people going in seeing the trailer obviously uh, say it's like Die Hard and Towering Inferno blending together. Uh, obviously, we've been making fun of this movie, kind of, but not like saying we're not going to like it, but we've been joking about The Rock not having a leg and jumping, uh, you know, <coughs> in the skyscraper and all that stuff, looking quite <laughs> silly. So we uh, both are kind of turning off our brains tonight to see something that's hopefully a really fun action movie. Uh, Thurber has produced and, and worked with Rock before. Uh, he's done a lot of comedies. Comedies kind of is where his Central area, um, the Central Intelligence, I believe, he worked on. Uh, he also did a few other comedies, uh, but he's known for being the funny man. So I'm kind of interested in seeing this this big action movie and kind of seeing it, where where how it pans out. Uh, getting out of Skyscraper, one of the most anticipated movies of the summer. Uh, what you think? Well, Dwayne The Rock Johnson did it again. <laughs> I had a lot of fun, dog. Yeah. And, it's, and you couldn't have said any better. You have to turn your mind off. This can't be a movie where you're like, okay, physics has to make sense. This can't be a movie where you're like, logic has to make sense. This can't be a movie where it just, this just has to be a movie where you have to understand we're in the summer season and we're here to, uh, he's taking over Arnold Schwarzenegger's role as the action man oh, okay. of Hollywood. Yeah. That's what he's done, I feel. Yeah. You know, I feel he is the, at least this generation right now is um, Arnold Schwarzenegger of, for me, it would probably have been the 80s, 90s. I, I would say I don't think since Arnold there's been a big enough action hasn't, star. There hasn't been yeah, one? No. And, uh, not someone of his, I mean, Jason Statham had his moments, you know, there was mm -hmm. a few others, but no one at the, not the, at, this, the, yeah. at the level of the rock. And if you ask me, honestly, I might even have to say he's, he's, he's either like right there or about to exceed. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. I, I might even have to go crazy, uh, yeah. bro. I don't know why. I, yeah. I might have to go crazy and say that just because he's like this. Uh, the, the Rock is just this guy who is able to be a steroids uh, for film. Mm -hmm. uh, just steroids for film. So it's like, even if it's just like an okay movie, if yeah. he's in it, it's just a little bit better. Yeah. And then for the, me, this movie also, is, it was an awesome movie. I had a lot of fun. Uh, Nev Campbell, though, yes. still. An absolutely beautiful mind. I never watched Party of Five in in my day, but I knew what that was. Uh, my really uh, taste of Nev Campbell was probably in the Scream films. Yeah, absolutely, was probably for me. Sydney Prescott. Yes, and yeah, for me. Uh, so Nev Campbell was great. Uh, that Asian girl, bad Asian girl. She was bad. <laughs> yeah, that bad yeah. Asian girl was bad. Uh, Kent. Yeah. Yeah, she was. She was bad. And I'm then um, Nev Campbell. They didn't make her an idiot that just was like. Oh, Oh, like she was She's a, not a damsel in distress. Oh, no, no, no. For no. sure. She was able Which to, is really cool. It's good to see. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she was able to like throw it out, so I enjoyed that. And then uh, the bad guy is meh. You know, the the guy that owns the skyscraper, though, he was in the Pearl. Dark Knight. But yeah, the Dark yeah, Knight. Yeah. Um, so he plays that, like, the I'm rich and I'm yeah. like, he plays that character. That's like, that's what he does. And he did fine. Uh, and then I'll end it with my. Uh, Dwayne Brock Johnson. He's the man, dog. I just don't care what anyone says. He's the man. He's he, San Andreas was uh, good. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed that. Uh, Jumanji. <sighs> that was like I forgot. It was like top three or something for me. Of the entire at least top five year, or two years. I ago. think it was number five or six. Yeah, it was. It was, it was, it was up there though. Yeah, it was amazing. Where we were expecting not to enjoy it at all. At all. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then uh, Rampage was again. If it, if if he wasn't in Rampage. Rampage probably would have been like a three. Yeah. And then because The Rock was in it, it elevated it to a five. Out of ten. Yes, out of ten. Uh, two out of four for him. Yeah. And if, if for that uh, <laughs> s scale, obviously, because you can I divide. I think the reason why I disagree with you only about Arnold, not that I'm like even a big fan of Arnold, Arnold just so happens to be in two, if not more, really big, important franchises that have like movies have stood the test of time. Where The Rock chooses a lot of projects where I really enjoy him in, but I don't know if, you know, like San Andreas won't be talked about in 20 years. Like it won't have a 25th anniversary edition. The Rock hasn't made that one movie yet that I think will really kind of stand the test of time like Predator or Terminator. You know, it won't do those kinds of things. And I think that's a problem in like Rampage and this. Like in San Andreas, I enjoyed too. I was, you know, I felt a little more intrigued by San Andreas. I didn't hate Skyscraper, but as much as you could turn your mind off and I could totally believe him, you know, jumping from a platform into a building, it, the movie just doesn't really have a very smart plot. And there's just a lot of things that just kind of don't make sense. And, you know, I'll buy the eccentric aspects of, like, The Rock being able to do things that isn't humanly possible, things all that. But the moment you just kind of have this whole storyline that doesn't really work and it's kind of silly, I think that's where you lose me. I mean, they could have made that a very basic story of just, you know, either it be uh, an attack to take over this building or a terrorist type of 
deal, you know, but they had to make it this really complicated thing, which ends up being quite silly, I think. Um, Nev Campbell, I totally agree with you though. I thought she was great in the movie. You know, they didn't make her a damsel in distress. She able to, was kind of able to have her own moments in the movie and really kind of shine. Uh, the Rock, of course, was entertaining. You know, I mean, that part where he's actually jumping the, from the platform to the building was actually quite entertaining, even though it's in every trailer, it's in every poster, you know he's not going to miss the jump, but it's entertaining. Um, but, like, I think there were little choices that just kind of hurt the movie. Like, I think the idea of him having to duct tape his hands and feet when he's crawling down the building was a bit tacky. Like, he could have just been holding on to things, and I would have believed it. You know, I know, again, like, that's just a moment where, like, I'm in already. Just, you know, don't make it tacky. But for him to be, like, you know, like, old well, comic book character, like, Spider-Man in it, I thought was a bit cheesy. He couldn't afford Ghost Protocol's budget. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. Tom Cruise, he has technology. Yeah, he had the gloves, right? Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't have the suction yeah. cups, you know? Yeah, the understand um, this chasing. yeah, yeah. But I think overall, though, my problem here was just the story. Like, the idea of why this this is happening, why the takeover of the that, tower yeah. is happening, is it's quite stupid. And you, you just kind of think about how easily this whole thing could have been avoided, or, you know, of course, there's so much technology that the excuse <clears throat> is that technology is becoming part of the issue. And it's just like, well, something in our day, um, I don't, I'm trying not to spoil what the whole deal is, but something in our day could have easily fixed and solved all this madness really quickly. Um, I did like the shout out to Lady from Shanghai. Back in the day, Orson Welles had a really good moment in this movie called Lady from Shanghai, where the end of the film, Orson Welles and the, and the film's protagonist were in a fun house with all the fun house mirrors. And they're trying to find each other. And, you know, they have all these fun house mirrors and they don't know which one to shoot, which one to hurt. And lo and behold, they find, you know, they find each other. In this movie, the ending climax sequence isn't in a fun house, but it has a very similar type of style where they're kind of in a space where they see a lot of reflections, they don't know who's real and who's not, and I think that was kind of cool. That's That really just made me excited because it reminded me of a, very, a movie that did it, you know, nearly 70 years ago now, which is really impressive to see that kind of callback. I think, speaking of callbacks, I think there's a few really cool callbacks in the movie. You know, they, they, they definitely bring things backwards, you know, um, the way that The Rock has his kind of final showdown with the main antagonist. Uh, I think Nev Campbell has a great joke at the end because there's something that's talked about very, very early and, and how we use technology and the great base way to fix technology. You know, I think those little things were, were kind of nice and smart, but overall I think the movie really just doesn't have a smart baseline and that's what hurts it more than anything. The easier you make that, the simpler you make that, I think the easier it is to enjoy because the moment you're kind of like, huh, Nev Campbell, there's, you know, the, the, the 96th floor is on fire. Why doesn't she start descending immediately? Why does she decide to stay there? You know, and, and things of those kinds of questions of just wondering why things aren't happening just make it easy. I will say the best action point in the entire film, best action sequence, took place in maybe the first 20 minutes in an apartment building between um, The Rock and another guy. And I mean, it is on, I mean, it was so good, but unfortunately, Everything that happened afterwards didn't live up to that hype, I don't think. The action sequence, the fighting, was just incredible, so well choreographed, and unfortunately, like, you know, the rest of it's really the rock in the building, and none of it's able to kind of live up to that anticipation of that fight sequence in the beginning. Overall, I liked it, but I think it's quite forgettable and not a movie that I actually will, will, will talk about later in the future. Love it. Um, next week, we have another action-packed movie. Yes. Denzel's back. Oh, I thought you meant Mamma Mia. I was confused. Equalizer too. I've never seen about. the first Mamma Mia. Oh, you're lucky. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I've heard it was great. It's not great. No, no, not very good at all. I'm not a fan. Maybe it's just the uh, music that's Our great. good friend Josh Bell, who sometimes appears on our show, yeah. uh, he was telling me that he was re-watching Mamma Mia to watch the sequel, and he has to, he's been watching it in 20-minute increments, because that's all he <laughs> That's all really, he can just do. So he could do. He has to take a break every 20 minutes. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's, that, that tells you kind of, like, I mean, but uh, we'll, we'll be reviewing Mamma Mia 2, and of course, yeah, where you were going was Anto Antoine Fuqua's Equalizer 2. Antoine. Which Fuqua everyone seemed to really badass. enjoy, except myself. I thought... Equalizer was okay, but there was like too many endings and I don't really remember much about it. I thought it was kind of forgettable, but hopefully the sequel is uh, is going to live up to the hype. And if not, it appears the following week we have a sequel that's that's definitely living up to the hype with Mission Impossible Fallout. The ratings for Mission Impossible best are... Best Mission Impossible yet is what I've been hearing. And people are saying not just the best Mission Impossible yet, uh, it's probably going to be the best action 
film of the year. Yeah. It's like everyone's like. Well, I've, I've liked every single one of the Mission Possibles. Most of them were really well reviewed, except the sequel. I think number two, John Woo. You know, I love John Woo stuff. John yeah, I, <laughs> give me the, the birds. The dubs, yeah, yeah, give me the birds. I, I mean, and I think you know, it's funny. I was reading some, and uh, I think Tom Cruise looks great with long hair. Just he, saying, he looks, I, and the whole man. <clears throat> oh man, there's such a great soundtrack to that too. Uh, there's just so much to like, and I'm really looking forward to Fallout. And we, we have uh, Superman joining in the cast now. Henry Cavill. You know, man. I mean, oh man, that's my favorite thing. Of the trailer. Doom, doom. Yeah. Let's go. Let's freaking go. Well, Let's either way, go. make sure you're here with us to watch the premieres of uh, either Equalizer 2, Mamma Mia, or uh, Mission Possible in the next couple of weeks. That, yeah. yeah, following Thursday here but at the MC Town Square. Uh, yeah. Equalizer 2. It's or sing with us. Or Mamma Mia, Cher. I got to see Cher live at CinemaCon because she was promoting this yeah. movie. And the only thing I could say that I'm looking forward to out of Mamma Mia 2 is that Cher will be in it. She's a has a lot of charisma. She's she's a legend. She's Cher. She's a legend. Yeah, yeah. she's Cher. She's Cher. She only got one name. That's all you need. Yeah. That's how you know you're up there. It's like a Prince Mar Mariah. Cher. You know who you're talking about. Well, no, but Mariah's still Mariah Carey. Celine. No, but there's Celine. Sting, there's Prince, there's Cher. Celine's not in this. Well, Celine. Okay. We I'll give you debate. Celine. Yeah. We have another another 50 minute um, debate about so, the Absolutely. Well, we'll be back here next week AMC Town Square. Make sure to text this guy on his phone number, 702-348-5618. Or text down below. We'll make sure to get you in at our private theater here at AMC Town Square, 10 o'clock. Uh, check out Shu's website. He's got a lot of things going on. You want to click that white eye, you'll head over to his YouTube channel. You'll learn all about the stuff that he's doing. Uh, and yeah. That we we're doing. Stuff going. Yeah, of course. Uh, plus, we're about to unveil something. Uh, that you and I are working on. Yeah, we have a lot of things yeah, that we're exciting. going on. So very exciting. Make Chase, sure to keep an eye out. Chase Simonakov's the Rats. Film Lovers website. 